Well, hello and welcome. We've got about 20 minutes to do a 35 minute presentation. So we are going to hit the ground running. I'm gonna, Go. paste, I'm gonna paste into the chat window, a link to a Padlet. A Padlet is basically an online bulletin board that lets you store information so that you can share it to everybody that needs to get access to it. If you do click on that link, it will take you to my Padlet. And I'll just pop up the little tab here. And in here, we've got an area for offline questions, some links to some resources, uh, everything that I'm going to talk about, you'll be able to do a little bit of uh, digging to find additional resources on. So with that, I'm going to jump right in. This session is technology to run a Rotary Club, the five apps and online services that I use to manage my club and share its story. If you've ever heard the Marshall McLuhan quote, the medium is the message. This is really true of technology. Back in the day, we used to be able to run a Rotary Club by you know, hand printing out meeting minutes and agenda items and snail mailing them to, to, to your board members. That's not the case anymore. And how you, your club carries itself digitally speaks to the potential members that you can attract. You have to be able to use the tools that you are given efficiently and effectively. And as boring as it is, our first area that I want to take a quick look into is Club Runner. Everybody has access to Club Runner and everybody uses Club Runner to some extent. There are a couple of areas in Club Runner that can really make a difference if you learn to use them effectively. And by effectively, I mean you need to start looking at just tweaking things to make your communications whether they're on your website, whether they're in your club emails, or whether they're in your events or speakers promotion, more visual. So I'm going to take a quick tour of a club runner. There's my club runner email. Uh, this is a club runner event. If you're going to do a club runner event, never leave this image area blank. It'll just leave a blank space where something visual could be. Adding images to a speaker are as simple as finding that image and you can download it from the internet, you can search for graphics. We have an upcoming club meeting dealing specifically with reconnecting with some of our Rotary Youth Exchange students. I went into Google and I typed in Rotary Youth Exchange Images. And I found one somewhere in here that I liked. I saved it as a spot on my desktop. And then when I go into Club Runner to put in that information, I make sure that I've got that video because if I, or that, that image, because if I've got that image, when somebody goes to my website, instead of seeing just plain boring text, I get a picture. You're gonna notice this as a theme for just about all of my presentation. If I was to go into communication, and email services inside of Club Runner. Oh, and I have my sessions timed out. Let me just log in again. I go into communication. I go into email services. There's two things that I want to communicate. Uh, the first is you can create your own template. You don't have to just use the standard boring uh, title goes here, message goes there. I've inserted a animated GIF that I found on the internet. Actually, I think I might've made this animated GIF and shared it on the internet, but I've also inserted my club logo. I've also inserted a donate now button. So the ability to create an email that looks something like this, and this went out to our club members. We've got a nicely sized graphic that communicates our upcoming fundraising strategy. We've got some of that boring text. We've got a link to Facebook, and then we've got an order now button. How do you get these things to appear inside a message? Well, I could say here is my great message. And I can go to this button up here and I can insert an image and I can browse my server to see where my images are. And you'll notice any image that I've uploaded is going to live in here. I've got a register now button. I've got an order now button. Let's say I want to put the order now button in. I double click on it. It's humongous. I don't want it to be so humongous. 
make sure that the padlock is on that locks the width and height. And let's maybe make this 50. Oh, that's a little too small. How about 75? No, that's still too small. I'm going to go with 100. There we go. Now I've got a button that's going to get inserted, but it's got a link somewhere. So I can have that link to my order form, which I'm just would paste my, my link into here. I can have a link to my Padlet if I want. Now I've got a button in my email that's going to go out to club members that you can actually click on to do something. It's visual and it's captivating. You want to make sure whenever you use Club Runner, you're using it to communicate visually. That's going to be a bit of a theme. Back to the, and I'm sorry if I'm running through this kind of fast, we do have not got a lot of time. So number one, Club Runner. Learn to use the visual components of Club Runner. It'll make your communications that much better. Number two, Google Suite. Uh, a lot of people are using online, like Office 365 or Google Suite to manage information. If you are a Rotary Club, you have the ability to get Google Suite at zero cost to your club. You are a not-for-profit organization. If you go to my Padlet, there's instruction on how to actually apply for this. It makes running your board incredibly easy. So I've got on my board, I've got a Google Drive that's set up, uh, here we go, that's set up for my board. There's a, a board shared drive that's got all of our board information. There's folders for each of our committees. There's a club services, communication, community, district, shared, foundation, fundraising, all of our documents that we normally end up leaving in a box somewhere in somebody's garage can be put online so that you can find them when you need them. For your board, we have a folder for board meetings broken down by years. I can go into our April board meeting and in our April, here, let's go to our March board meeting. I've got my minutes and I've got my agenda from that particular meeting. And in other folders, I've got any additional documentation that we needed for that meeting. It's all there and our board members can easily act to access it. When I go into a minutes template, this can be opened up in your meeting and your screen can be shared and you and your secretary and anybody else that's looking on that document will see the secretary go through and append uh, decisions or actions live and in real time. And if our secretary highlights something here, like in this case, there's a Polio Plus fundraiser, uh, pass around to members once they have their vaccine, they can make a small donation for Polio Plus. You may have seen this on our Facebook page. You got a little Facebook profile picture uh, overlay that you can do that says, I got my vaccination, I made a donation. So Kelly highlighted the action item and assigned it to me. And I got an email later that night saying, you were just assigned an action item from your board meeting. This is an outstanding way to manage your board. Now, I just saw somebody had a quick chat and I can't see the chat window. So is this, how is this different from the Club Runner organization module or is, is Google more similar to Dropbox? Well, it's more similar to Dropbox when you're looking at um, the fact that you can manage things very similarly to Dropbox, except Dropbox depends on how your members have got it set up. And you may have a member that's maxed out their free version of Dropbox and it just stops. Google Drive lets you share everything online so you're not gonna run into that space storage limitation. Google Drive is also going to let you open up these documents natively in Google Documents and anybody can contribute as opposed to somebody that may or may not have Word installed. It's just, a, it's one place where everybody can go to use the same set of tools that you can then share out amongst your members. You can also, because it is a complete installation of Google Suite, you can create email addresses for your club. I have Sean at Rotary Edmonton Northeast. We have a treasurer at Rotary Edmonton Northeast that you can e-transfer money to. It lets you customize things in, uh, in the Google Suite environment. So if you want to have a, a president at, or a treasurer or a youth services at, you're allowed to do that. Check the Padlet for information on how to get set up with Google Suites. You need to have a TechSoup account, and there's a couple of hoops that you have to jump through, but it's absolutely worth it. Number three is absolutely going to be Zoom or Google Hangouts or Microsoft Teams or Cisco WebEx or any of those platforms that you use to share your club story, to have your club meetings hosted visually. We're all old hats at Zoom by this point, uh, and, and we can expect going forward that hybrid rotary meetings, they are going to be 
the 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 way people are going to want to interact uh, with your club in the future. Uh, working with the Edmonton Foundation of Community Leagues, what we're hearing from them is that we used to not have people show up to community league meetings because they couldn't get out of the house to do it. But when they moved all their meetings to Zoom, all of a sudden people are showing up left, right, and center. It opens the door to connecting with people not only in your club, but in the larger circle of your community. But in order to run Zoom effectively, you've got to learn. And not everybody hits the ground running with a brain that's preloaded to understand technology. And I totally get that because I have I, my brain is hardwired to work with technology. I love it. But if you don't understand how to use the platform, learn. There's an incredible wealth of resources out there in terms of learning videos, training videos, some of them from Zoom itself. I've got a link to it in my Padlet. Don't only focus on building your capacity, focus on building your club member's capacity. This is stuff that everybody can learn how to do better. It's not always going to be easy for all of your club members to understand all of the different things in Zoom. And you can't always take time in the middle of a presentation to stop and walk somebody through, oh, where's the breakout room? How do I mute myself? There's resources online that you can go to that you can share with your club to say, hey, take a couple of minutes, watch this video at Zoom Basics. It'll let you feel more comfortable with how you're doing. Uh, uh, meeting is ending in eight minutes. I'm three slides in. We're not doing too bad. Uh, understand your platform. Learn how to make it work for you. That means learn how to use breakout rooms. Learn how to use the polling feature in Zoom. Learn how to stream your meetings live to Facebook. Our club does this and it generates a ton of eyeballs on our content. It's a fantastic way to get your club's message out there. Learn how to do it. Prepare your content. It's great to just turn on Zoom and sit there and look at the Brady Bunch screen and talk to everybody, but balance it out. Have some time to talk. Have an actual scripted presentation. Make sure you're using the tools to your advantage. Number four, Visme or Canva or Prezi or Emaze or Pictochart or Infographia or Beautiful.ai. These are all modern presentation software tools. I use Visme, and that's what my presentation that you're seeing here is done in. My Padlet link includes a link to this presentation, as well as a link to one of my club meetings that we've done, as well as a link to the Facebook live stream from Senator Paula Simons from uh, our meeting last week. If you can learn to use Visme to do your presentations, A, they look really, really, really cool. There's a million different templates, so you can change it up or you can just have a meeting template that you reuse over and over again. Visme or any of those other alternatives are built to do infographics and social media graphics. How many of uh, our people have seen the Rotary Club of Edmonton Northeast, just recent one, this hungry, uh, fill out your freezer with pierogi, sausage, drink, and cabbage roll. This was a, a stock uh, uh, infographic set up as a Facebook post size. All of the templates are there for you. It really is as simple as getting the free account, going in, hit the create new project, new, I want to do a new social graphic. And then it lets me pick from a million different social graphics, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube channel cover videos, LinkedIn videos, Pinterest graphics. If I want a Facebook and if I want a Facebook post, now <laughs> I've got to scroll through the million different possible Facebook posts. I can apply the rotary branding and theme colors to this. I can edit it. Uh, some of them are animated and they look spectacular. This is where PowerPoint wishes it could be. Uh, I've seen a lot of PowerPoint presentations today and I don't want to drag PowerPoint through the mud, but it's what we used 10, 15, 20 years ago, things have changed and we can change with the time. And again, the medium is the message. Number five. Oh no, not social media. Ah. The biggest impediment to Rotary Clubs effectively using social media is that they don't necessarily know what to use all of the different social media feeds for. Social media is the single best way to get your message out to your own closed circle of information, as well as to the more broader world out there. And Rotary Clubs are especially guilty of this because we tend to share our stuff when we do Facebook stuff. We tend to share it with the district and our Facebook page. And that's where it stops. And that's great if you want to impress other Rotary Clubs. And that's great if you want to make sure your members have got you know adequate communication. But 
that doesn't get your message outside of the, 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 the bubble of Rotary. And we heard it this morning uh, from our first keynote speaker, share, share is valuable. The like button is great, the little emoticon, whatever, but you've got to leverage your members to share things on their own Facebook pages. Breakout's ending in four minutes and I think I'm gonna make it. Uh, before I get uh, too lost, what do you use different Facebook or different social media platforms for? Facebook lets you like things. Twitter tells you what you're doing right now. Instagram lets you take pictures of things. YouTube lets you watch videos. LinkedIn lets you talk about skills for your rotary projects. Pinterest, if there's, if there's a recipe, you can use it for, for recipes. Skype, you can call me about the project. WordPress and blogging, hey, I can write about the project. Yeah, Google, I can search for my project. And Reddit, hey, that's a great place if you're gonna look for crowdsourcing for your projects. We use to tell our stories by inviting people to come to our meetings and we would have our projects maybe highlighted in traditional media, but social media lets us tell that story to anyone. But we need to tell that story beyond our club members. We need to tell that story to the general population. And that means leveraging your club members to share your content. It's great that you put it out there, but when you put it out there, put out a note to your club members, talk about it in your meetings and say, please, for our found, our, our, uh, our pierogies fundraiser, share that on your own page so it gets, it escapes the bubble. I have a note to talk about social media accounts. Make sure your secretary or somebody is designated to have your social media account information, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. You don't want someone leaving your club and taking that account with them. Make sure your club is set up in such a way that there's a group of people that know the usernames and the passwords so that if someone does happen to leave, you know that you're gonna be able to continue to be posting as the Rotary Club of Edmonton Northeast. Lessons learned. Hey, if you don't know how, you've got to learn. And that's a challenge to everybody. Yeah, I might not know how to do something in Zoom. Okay, do I just say, all right, I don't know how to do it? No, if there's something that you want to try to learn, learn it, L use Google, type in, how do I use a breakout room in Zoom? And I guarantee you, you'll get 10 different videos from Zoom and then a bunch of from independent people in the communities that are going to be helpful. You can learn, two minute warning. Uh, takeaway number two, make it visual at all costs, at all times. Make your posts visual, include a picture. If you're good enough, include a movie, include an animated GIF, but make sure your message isn't a bland wall of text that people just gloss over. I'm tired of getting emails, and some of them come from my own Rotary Club, some of them come from the district, where it's just a great big box of text. And I, no, give me a little something that my eyes can, can oh no, two minutes are going, that my eyes can adjust to. Number three, build club capacity for this. It's great that you're learning the technology, but make sure that you leave a pathway for people in your club to learn more about the technology for themselves. Teach yourself and teach others. Oh, and we've gone to Google Suite. Sorry, we're going to go to the very last slide. We got to go to slide number 11. Additional information. Hey, if you need to do videos, iMovie is great. Final Cut is great. Move AVI is also great. If you're looking to engage people, Mentimeter, Padlet, also on my Padlet page. If you're looking for an image editor, I recommend Acorn, Photoshop Express, and Rotary's Brand Central is awesome for finding information. If you want to manage social media better, Hootsuite is fantastic. Later is also really good. Hootsuite lets you do social media research. You can set up a feed in Hootsuite that'll keep track of all of the community.